could you imagine what it would be like if Singapore were to sink and be submerged underwater? Uh, because we have low-lying lands, uh, Singapore is under threat from rising sea levels uh, due to climate change. And this is what the future generation is going to have to face. So to help us visualise this future underwater, the Straits Times graphics team has designed a virtual reality, or VR, uh, interactive to allow us to travel into the future and see what it would be like for ourselves. Uh, with me to discuss this today is interactive graphics journalist Rebecca. Hello. Hello. Hi. So could you tell us a little bit more about this project? Yeah, so actually there are two uh, versions of our climate change project. Uh, one being the, the one on rising sea levels focusing on Merlion Park. Mm -hmm. So the one where you see the Merlion uh, swimming in the ocean, basically. Um, and then the second version we re released at the end of last year. So this one was dealing with the more immediate impacts of climate change, like uh, seafood shortages, um, you know, rising temperatures, and erratic weather patterns. I see. So for, th uh, for those who haven't used a VR headset before, how does this work? Yeah, so <laughs> the VR industry in the last three years that we've been working on it um, has changed so much and it's just constantly changing. So a bit of a history lesson. Um, sure. Back in 2016, when we first started working on this, we had something like this, which is a Google Cardboard device. Um, it's a kind of cheap, it was all the rage back then. Um, you're just using your iPhone, you could slot it in and then you could actually you know, s view the project this way. Um, and I do recommend always with VR to use headphones as well ah. because uh, you know we tend to not uh, listen to a lot of video with sound anymore so but the virtual reality really needs that uh, visual and auditory sense it's overload so it really takes you yeah to a new place mm. um, now more recently so for our second project uh, we actually designed it for this thing <laughs> which is oh. by uh, Lenovo and it right. works with the Google's uh, second uh, second version of their uh, VR technology which is mm -hmm. called Google Daydream. So it's a little bulkier, it's a little heavier um, but it also allows us to really amp up the graphics and make it very very interesting. Um, so you obviously put this on your head but it also has something like this which is a little remote control and it in introduces interaction, which is quite fun. Okay. So instead of just like, for example, in our project, instead of just watching the sea rise mm -hmm. um, around you, you can actually rise the water yourself. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. <laughs> I see. So you know, these devices are constantly changing. Who knows? Who yeah. knows what will be in a, in a year or so, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. So why did you decide to use VR? Yeah, this is a question we get a lot. So mm -hmm. I guess um, for me personally, I look at climate change and I think it's a big issue. I think it's a, yeah. something that we should be concerned about. On the other hand, um, I know and I can understand how some readers, some people fail to kind of, or, or cannot connect with the issue. Um, right. It's a little, you know, when you're looking at climate change science, it's like predictions and data and it's things like very far in the future and, and maybe things that we won't even right. see possibly. It's difficult to relate to. Exactly. So, so for example, our first project that we did on rising sea levels, uh, that visual of the merlion swimming in the ocean with the seven meters of uh, sea level rise, even with the most extreme predictions, is in 2,500. Mm. That's really far, really far away, um, which is why for our second project, uh, we decided to kind of dial it back a little bit um, and have a look at some of the more immediate impacts of climate change. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just recently had, well, not recently, but I, I have a son who's a year and a half, years, a year and a half now, mm -hmm. and uh, I think about him and the fact that, you know, his grandchildren, if he has them one day, uh, they'll see a very, very different Singapore. So, you know, with this in mind, um, we start the project off in Boat Key. Mm. And uh, with this, you know, generational gap in mind, as you're going through the project, you'll actually hear a conversation between a grandmother, who could potentially be the reader's granddaughter, mm -hmm. um, and her grandchild. So she's reminiscing, a bit nostalgic about how Singapore was um, and how much it's changed. And mm -hmm. Boat Key, in particular, deals with seafood shortages. Okay. Um, so we're looking at um, very real predictions that the seafood, the fresh seafood that we're used to eating now, mm -hmm. um, will be either become very, very expensive or will be very hard to find or near impossible to find. So we expect this kind of an area like Boat Key, which is full of seafood restaurants, will eventually die out. Um, and, you know, somebody like, you know, my potential great grandchild will never be able to experience that. So in, in the, we address that in the climate change. So the grandmother, uh, through a very flashy, uh, historical device can show what it used to look like the boat key uh, in right. the past yeah um, then we have like three other scenes so the mm -hmm. second scene is again a redo of the rising sea levels the merlion 
uh, rising the water up seven meters. Right. Um, but we also deal there with rising temperatures. Okay. And so we, in, we ask the reader or the viewer of the, the VR project to turn around and look at the one Fullerton building. Mm -hmm. And they see that the temperature is 36 degrees. So <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been down there in the middle of the day, but it's hot enough as it is at like 30, 32 degrees. Right. Um, I grew up in Australia, so in country Australia, if it gets to 36 degree temperatures, you're not going outside, like, <laughs> you're staying you're inside with the aircon on, and I'm pretty sure they didn't even let us go to school at that kind of temperature. So, again, dealing with that, you're in that space, you can see it's very devoid of any tourists, there's not much movement there, and I really feel for, um, you know, our future generations, how they're going to cope with that. Right. Um, it's going to be very heat. different, yeah. Um, the third scene then mm -hmm. takes us to the top of Marina Bay Sands. Okay. So this sort of deals more with um, seeing the rising sea levels from just a different perspective. Okay, sort of a higher perspective. Yeah, higher perspective. Um, and then also the erratic weather pattern. So this is the unpredictable rainfall, the chances for drought. Um, these sorts of things are very real. So I think even now, Singaporeans probably know that it's, it's hard to predict the weather here. Mm. Um, and it's only going to get worse. It is. It's only going to get worse, exactly. Um, and the final scene mm. is a kind of sci-fi twist on a data visualization. Okay. So this is where we can have a bit of fun with VR um, and just kind of the purpose of it is to show the context of rising sea levels mm. um, in, you know, across the whole island just from a totally different perspective. Right. So you get flown up above Singapore and you can see the whole context of it. It's really quite fun to try. Well, I'll, I'll be sure to check that out at, at some <laughs> point. Uh, so what are some of the challenges you would say uh, you faced while doing this project? So I think, you know, VR technology hasn't really had the take up that uh, we would have expected maybe three years ago. Okay. So I'm guessing that most Singaporeans have maybe, if they've tried the devices mm -hmm. at an exhibition or at an right. event, a museum, a maybe gallery. You don't own this probably. Right, exactly. The having these devices at home, it's not so mainstream like having a mobile phone mm. um, yet. Who knows where we will be in the future, but right now this is the Not situation. Yet. <laughs> yeah. So we were very fortunate um, to be invited to the Eco Film Festival at the end of last year at the Art Science Museum um, through our collaboration with the Earth Observatory of Singapore, um, who are based at NTU. So they actually helped us a lot with, you know, verifying and double checking our scientific information in the project. So it's it's a very narrative field, but they made sure that we're, exactly. we're accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, so we got to actually get out of our newsroom, take these devices down there and get people to try it. And you know, it was just really fun to see a very different experience for people to try out. Um, you know, we had kids there that would just watch, it's about four or five minutes long and they would just watch it again and again and again. And the big kids too, so the adults, the, even the standoffish ones are like, okay, I'm going to try this. So it was just, it's a really different way of telling this the same story. I see. Yeah. But if you don't have uh, like access to a VR headset uh, at home, and I would suspect more likely than not, I won't be able to, uh, you also will be able to experience this uh, via our VR web version. And if you'd like to access it, the link is will be on the screen right now. So thanks for sharing more with us, Rebecca. It's a wonderful VR project. I'll be sure to check it out on the yes. link. <laughs> and those were our top stories of the day. If you'd like more news and stories and interactives, do go on to our website, www.streetstimes.com. Thanks for watching The Big Story. This has been Kimberly, and we'll see you on Monday. <laughs>